Good evening, Facebook land. How are we doing? It is uh, Thursday, 8.02, so we got a little bit of a late start. But we are here, and we're almost at the end of the week, so that is the really exciting part about Thursdays, right? Not just that you'll be hanging with me uh, and, and my latest victim uh, uh, in terms of these awesome conversations. Tonight, uh, I am honored to, to have a really good friend of mine um, with us to chat about all things uh, modern day related. So uh, I, will, I will bring her on shortly, um, but I wanna talk a little bit about how we're doing, the concept and the phrase of how you doing. Um, and so that's what we'll be chatting about today and kind of delving in to uh, the importance of kind of doing a, a check-in. Uh, it's, it's about time that we do a check-in, see how we're doing, right? I'm gonna give people a few more minutes to, to kind of corral in, and then we'll, we'll bring on Lacanya, the wonderful, the talented, the beautiful, and the brilliant uh, Lacanya. So. All right. And you're live, madame. Good evening, Lakanya. How are you? <laughs> How are you? I am doing well. Everybody, meet my friend, my lovely friend, and former duet partner, yes. <laughs> Lakanya Patrice Manguel. And I had to admit to her that <laughs> for about 20 years, I thought I was been saying her last name wrong. Um, <laughs> it is not. Emmanuel, it is manual. It is yeah. Lacanya yeah. Patrice Manuel. Um, yeah. It is a privilege to have you here tonight. Uh, Lacanya <laughs> has had a lot of career experience. Uh, right now, she is helping the world um, uh, through her brilliance in um, in the mental health uh, profession, and so she brings a wealth of knowledge and a lot of experience because we are going to do a gut check and a mental health check today. So that's what it's all about. It's all about. So kind of, how are you doing? What have you been doing for the past two decades? <laughs> <laughs> it has been that long. It has been that uh, long. I left Augusta, which I thought I would never do. I love Augusta. Oh, I love you're like the only one. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. A lot of people see that, but uh, I am now here in Charleston, South Carolina. All right. Um, I love the beach, so I'm here because of the beach and work and family. This awesome. year is awesome. Awesome. That's pretty. That's awesome. Didn't know that that you had family in Charleston. I have family in Charleston. Um, my my maternal grandmother's side of the family is all up in Charleston, and I have a cousin who is like a brother who currently works in, in Charleston um, as well. So, uh, yeah, we can't get too far from each other, Lakanya. <laughs> we got too many. And, and you know what? I almost went to Georgia College and State. Why didn't you come? Why didn't that, you? That was my second choice. I had went there and did a little campus tour and everything. See? See, you should have came. You should have yeah. came. <laughs> I love my office, though. I love my office state, though. It, it it seems like you have a, an infatuation with going south. Like, what is that? I do. I do. Yes. When I retire, I plan to go to Florida. Okay. To be to the beach. Hey, why not? Why not? Provided <laughs> that Florida's still there. <laughs> Florida and California. I'm a little shaky if they're going to be there in a little bit. <laughs> and governors, but. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So back to our, our overarching question tonight. How are you doing? How am I doing? Yes. I am doing okay. Okay. I'm maintaining. I'm coping. Just like okay. all of us are trying to right now. Yeah. Um, I really am appreciative of the fact that I can work from home. Okay. Even, even though it's every other week that still has been helpful for me just mentally to be able to stay home and not have to worry about what's outside. 
out here in these streets because it's real. <laughs> it's true. It's real. And especially here in South Carolina, the numbers have went up um, again. Okay. So um, next week I will be home, and I'm quite okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. So are you doing like a full five days in 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 your office? Okay. Because yeah. there's some co- companies that are going to three days, four days, or every yeah. other when they're in yeah. the office. I've so. heard that. Yeah. Um, Just to kind of that flow um, of consistency, we just decided just to do every other week. Okay. Yeah. And are there are you guys in alternating groups? Do some people like well, while you're out, will there be other people in the building? Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So like group A, group B kind of thing. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not hating that. I'm kind of liking that. That, that kind of works, you know. Uh, you know, it gives germs a time to j- die down in between that those weak parts. So I'm good with that. I am good with that. Um, so you get to see this pandemic and social unrest not only through your own eyes, but through eyes of people who need counseling, need help. Um, people, you know, who are struggling and suffering and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, well, not good stuff. Um, <laughs> it's not good. It's not, none of it's good, right? None of it's good. But what you give, what you, the service you provide to them is, mm. is good stuff. Um, what are some of the commonalities that you are seeing that are consistent between what we see on TV and then what we are experiencing as people? There is a lot of just anxiety because nobody knows. Nobody really knows what's going on. This is so new to a lot of people, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this idea of frustration, depression, anger, because you really don't know what else to do. You know, there is no guideline for coronavirus. No. How to deal with this, you know. Um, now, the racial injustice part, you know, some people are familiar with that, you know, but some people are just now waking up to that. And so it's new for them, too. Yeah. 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 So <clears throat> you focus a lot on maintaining healthy relationships. So while we're in this pandemic, you know, what are some key things that people can do to help maintain healthy relationships, whether they're together and we, we never want to talk about being in the same house and sheltering in place together, what that can do. But also when people are trying to be brought, they have to be brought together through other means because they are, you know, uh, social distancing, sheltering in place in different zip codes, different house households. Mm. I think that people are now realizing that they don't know people like they think they know them, <laughs> you know, because we're in our houses and we're like, okay, I got to go to work. I have to go to school. I have to go do this. Well, now we're spending a lot of time with each other. Yeah. And we're getting to know each other. For better or for worse. <laughs> for better or for worse, you know, in the midst of a crisis. So how do you handle pressure? How do you handle sorrow? Mm. How do you handle grief? Like some people are just now seeing this from their significant others or family members or children for the very first time, you know? So this is like a very big eye opener for a lot of people, you know? Yeah, what, what? so let's, let's give you a scenario. Mm-hmm. Uh, mother and father of two children. Um, father has been laid off from work. Mother is working from home, mm-hmm. children are in home. What advice would you give to that that, that's, a, that's an average everyday American family. What are some of the, the, the not necessarily tricks, but some of the coping skills and mechanisms that you would suggest to people like that or to a situation like that? I would say take the time to talk. Mm. So many people are together and they're not utilizing this time to get to know each other better take this time you know i think some people are seeing this as a horrible time you know Mm -hmm. there are some horrible things about it but how can we make the most of it 
You have all this time now to get to know your children, to get to know your spouse all over again. So mm. we can be in games. We can actually eat dinner at the dinner table together and talk. You know, we can use this time to really build relationships if we use this time um, wisely. Yeah. yeah. So just talking like that really. And I know that sounds so simple, mm. but talking like let's talk to each other. Mm. Let's not text. Let's not, you know, TikTok. I mean, that's fine. Okay, if you're doing that as a family, I get it. But, <laughs> you know, this, I, I just think that quality time right now is so important. Like, even though we're social distancing, we can still be connected. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the connection. That brings me to kind of like, how do we connect and make sure we maintain healthy relationships, whether they're romantic or platonic? How do we maintain those relationships um, that are that are distant, mm -hmm. you know, that when we're not in the same sheltering in place together? Right. I've seen some really great ideas. Um, one of my good friends went on a date and when she first asked, I said, whoa, 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 what? Wait, did you wear a mask? With this? <laughs> <laughs> but what happened, like, um, they picked up curbside from a restaurant. Okay. And one person sat in their own vehicle, the other person sat in their own vehicle, and they just talked through the window. <laughs> and they they got to know each other. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was great. That is legit cur that is legit uh, drive through dating right there. That's like the McDonald's of dating is adorable. <laughs> Like, I really wish there were more um, driving movie theaters right now. Like, that would be yeah. nice. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the idea, though, with that is that you'd be in the car with your date. You no, know? no, no, no. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drive my car. You drive your car. I'll meet you, and we're going to sit in our separate cars. <laughs> okay. You know? <laughs> SUVs are not the way to go with that. You need compact cars, so at least the distance isn't that far to talk across across the windows. Uh, across the windows. Uh, uh, is this a time? Because it is a crisis. But it, do you see this as a time where um, maybe broken relationships could be prepared, repaired? And if so, what are some of the steps that you would encourage people to do? to try to reach out to, to someone uh, in an effort to repair a broken relationship. You mean like if they're long distance? Not long distance or in the same zip code, just somebody you haven't talked to in a while. And, you, and for whatever reason, you know, the, there was a, a stoppage or a break okay. in the relationship where there was a breakup or a family falling out or a, two friends divorcing each other. Mm -hmm. I've seen a meme that says this is not the time to text your ex <laughs> and <laughs> I mean I'm not going to argue with it you know therapeutically <laughs> speaking I just feel like if there was a break let's ponder about why there was one you know okay. let's, let's talk about it. let's not just glide over that and just mm -hmm. get right back together. So let's talk about why was there a stoppage, as you said. <laughs> you know, why why did that happen? We need to explore that first before yeah. we can talk about repairing. That's good advice. That sound that sound advice right there. <laughs> um, you and I were talking uh, yesterday uh, in preparation for our, our chat. And mm -hmm. we mentioned you mentioned a, a couple of things. Um, one that stood out to me was we talked where we kind of got the whole idea of how are you doing um um uh, quite a few things and i'm going to unpack that a number of things fit out to me with, with our conversation on that and one in particular um how we mask things how we glide over things how we glaze over things mm -hmm. um and we don't necessarily deal with uh, the tough the tough conversations and um or the tough feelings or the tough emotions. Um, why is that? And what are what are things that people need to do to try to undo the damage uh, or, or prevent making the mistakes of damaging further? 
with with that kind of idea of glazing over things. I don't think people like com you know conflict. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't like confrontation, gotcha. um, and so they avoid it. You mm -hmm. know. I'd rather not, I don't want to have to have this conversation with you. I don't want to have to apologize, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So to avoid that, I'm going to avoid you. I'm going to avoid the situation and act like it didn't happen. Mm. So how do we get beyond that? How do we move past, I don't want to have this conflict. And what I often tell people is every disagreement does not have to be an argument. We don't have to argue. We can talk, express our feelings, process our thoughts, and come to some kind of understanding, not agreement, because there won't always be an agreement. Sometimes we really just don't have the same views, but I can understand. And sometimes just knowing that that person understands you can kind of ease the tension and mend relationships. Mm, that sounds like it requires a lot of empathy. Um, that To me, that just sounds like almost the quintessential, de not quite the quintessential definition of empathy, but close to it. So how do people gut check on, on, on that particular, uh, I guess, emotional intelligence? Mm -hmm. I think there has to be a sense of vulnerability. Are you willing to risk that and open yourself up to that person? And there are some relationships where some people aren't just willing to do that with that particular person. Mm. And wow. that has to do with trust. If you don't trust me enough to be vulnerable, how can we have a relationship? Wow. Um, that's deep. That's deep on an interpersonal relationship when it comes to, I, I guess, more romantic relationships. But when you take that out and you make it more platonic and it, it's more like co-workers, mm -hmm. co-workers of different ethnic backgrounds or different backgrounds in general, maybe of the same ethnicity, but of different generations, um, you know, of different socioeconomic status, uh, mm -hmm. th that whole level of vulnerability, it's, uh, it's kind of of a tough pill to swallow with someone you don't really know and don't really have any obligation <laughs> there. Um, so do our interpersonal relationships outside of the home reflect our interpersonal relationships inside the home? Hmm. I'm sorry, that's a new question. <laughs> we didn't go over that one yesterday. <laughs> No, 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 because it made me think about my mind instantly went back to what you just said a few minutes ago about wearing a mask. Mm. You know, so at work, we'll wear a mask of the professional, you know, I have to be this certain type of way. And then at home, I'm a different way. So I don't really know if they kind of, I think we're different people when we go different places. We learn to adapt mm. to our environment. Now, I don't know if that's healthy or not, but <laughs> I, think we, I think we see that as survival. Wow. Yeah. Survival. We did talk about that yesterday. <laughs> we did talk about that. Let's unpack that. Um, uh, definitely talking about in the South, you know, the whole concept of how you're doing. <laughs> Nobody wants to really know how you're doing. <laughs> And we see that it like it rolls off our tongue. Hey, how you doing? I'm and they, you literally keep on walking while you're asking the question. It's like, did you really want to know how I'm doing, or you were just talking? Like, lip service, platitude. <laughs> yeah. Do you really care? You yeah. know, and and it's it's really interesting because most people don't. Hmm. And, and I know that sounds so horrible, but like this thing, like if you're in Dillard's and somebody's walking by you and you say, hey, how you doing? If that person stopped and told you everything that's going on at their job and in their home and on the car ride to church, you know, yeah. like, is that what you really want to know? Do you care? Oh. There's no relationship with that person. 
Wow. Does this pandemic, though, create a pseudo sense of connection? Because we're all kind of in it together. Tragedy does that. Tragedy will bring people together. And then when that tragedy is over, we separate. Mm. So um, how can we get people to stay together? Because that's the goal. That would be wonderful. Yeah. But how can we keep people united? And I think it's us finding common common themes between us. What do we have in common? Well, you don't know that or won't know that until you talk. And get, uh, you know, take the time. Let's talk about it. Let's talk mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Um, wow. That's, that's why I think your this show is so great because like you're talking, you're getting people to think and you're inviting people into other people's homes that they may have never or would ever have the opportunity to talk to. True. True. So thank you. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> this is the second time I didn't think about something I was going to do anyway. So <laughs> second time today. So I will. Mm-hmm. You're welcome, I guess. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, um, uh, we we kind of talked about uh, this a little bit, uh, but I kind of want to go a slightly different direction. Um, you know, now people are going uh, back to work, but mm-hmm. in many cases, that back to work may look an awful lot like you know your dining room table um, because you know we're still socially distancing and maybe working from home if you have that luxury. Um, but in other cases, you know, we are put back in. Uh, in direct contact um, with people that we have major cultural differences with. Um, And so what are some of the number one pieces of advice that you give people um, to ensure that we we social distance um, any type of personal convictions (laughs) <laughs> outside of the workplace we social distance those for the sake of for the sake of of collegiality mm. and is that possible uh, right <laughs> <laughs> um i like the saying you know we have two ears and one mouth mm. for a reason you know why are we so quick to want to tell people how we feel about something when we know it could cause tension. I mean, I think it's one thing to be able to talk about how you feel. It's another to try to persuade somebody to try to think how you think. And I think that's where conflict arises. If we were just talking, you know, this is how I feel, okay, and that's how you feel, oh, okay, that's different, but okay, I get why you feel that way and move on. But yeah. what we'll do is, what you need to do is, this is what you feel this way. And it's like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. <laughs> you don't have to go there. I yeah. mean, but because you can say something, and later on, that person can think about it, and they can have their own revelation about it. Yeah. You know, they don't, you don't have to persuade somebody to believe anything. If it's meant for them to have that conviction, it'll come to them. Wow. That, uh, that makes a whole lot of sense. Or as my grandmother used to say, that makes even sense. <laughs> like, Grandma, how does it make even sense? It balance out, baby. It balance out. I got it, Grandma. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it now. I got it now. It could all be so simple. It shouldn't. It, it shouldn't we be. make it hard. We do. We do. We make it hard. We definitely do. How did you make the leap into the mental health profession? Like, how did you get from point A to point B and to now into therapy. Mm-hmm. I made that rhyme on purpose. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, let me, you know, what's funny about it is I've been doing this since middle school. Okay. So, <laughs> so in middle school, we had a thing called peer mediators and I was yeah. on the, <laughs> all during middle school. And then the high school, I was on it as well. And I remember for, you know, for our year, but we had to put what we wanted to be. And I put, I wanted to be an experimental psychologist. What is that? (laughs) I took 
took that one experimental psychology class in college. I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not working with all these numbers. I don't do numbers. <laughs> no. but, like, I wanted to do like a lot of researching and testing. But mm-hmm. as I started taking more courses, I realized, no, nah, I want to do more talking and listening. I want to yeah. help people solve their problems like I was doing in middle school and high school. Mm-hmm. So um, I decided, I went to about Austin, I decided to stay there for my master's. They had a program for marriage and family therapy. There's only three schools in Georgia that have that program, and Valdosta was one of them. So I was like, this is, this is meant to be. I need to just yeah. stay here yeah. you know, and get this degree. And so that's what I did. I graduated with my bachelor's in May, and I started my um, graduate school in June. That, no break. <laughs> No I break. If I did, I probably wouldn't go back. So <laughs> I was like, let me keep you. this right on. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Um, and then my first job, you know, it's all about who you know. My first job was at Payne College. And my boss actually knew my pastor. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. In the and church. So, <laughs> yeah. So I was the counselor there, um, but of course it wasn't the amount of counseling that I wanted to do. I actually was able to do some family sessions with that. Okay. Um, and it was a lot of like organizing and planning. And at one point I wanted to be like an event planner. Why? <laughs> Listen, I love I started doing people's baby showers and bridal showers and you know. I love doing stuff like that. And I, I even had the idea to um, do people's, uh, like, plan their weddings, do their premarital counseling, and then plan their baby shower. <laughs> if they make it that far. <laughs> I was like, but that's a lot of work. I said, I'm not doing all that. No, that's I'm not way do that. too much work. That's yeah. way too much work. Wow. Um. So, so I just, I went into mental health. Um, in Augusta and started working with um, community mental health and that's where I I feel like I really got the experience because I was working with um, some diagnoses that is more you know it's more challenging schizophrenia and bipolar and um, manic depressive you know and people who were not willing to take medication so wow Yes, it was a little bit more active. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so my goal was to get a job that um, gave me benefits and had me covered insurance wise and um, one that I would retire from. And so I moved to Charleston for that. I got what I wanted and I'm good to go. Good. And <laughs> you need the beach. That's an added, added, mm-hmm. added bonus. Added yes. bonus. Yes. Um, awesome. <laughs> Awesome sauce. We talked briefly yesterday about um, about the post traumatic uh, stress uh, mm-hmm. disorder. Um, I probably said it all wrong. Uh, <laughs> post traumatic stress syndrome. There we go. Uh, no, post traumatic stress disorder. Got it. There we go. There we go. I got it now. You <laughs> help me. Help me get there. <laughs> Help me help you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, and, and how what we're going through right now is a, is causing the type of trauma for which we could potentially all be experiencing PTSD. Yeah. But you kind of clarified it for me and says we're, we're actually experiencing it on a consistent basis over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, explain some of the some of the basic elements of, of, of PTSD and how it applies to this whole scenario in today's time. We've got a lot going on right now. Yes. Um, the, I like to break it down into four criteria um, just to help people understand it better because I think that on TV, people will see PTSD as, you know, going crazy or, you know, acting out. And that's not always how it looked. Um, So one of the criteria is just being alert, being observant. Um, And with everything that's going on right now, we definitely are all doing it. 
you know, we're looking over our shoulders. Every time somebody coughs, we, you know, we look and, you know, <laughs> you know, we have a reaction to it. Um, then there's also numbness. And there are some people right now with everything going on, they're tired of reacting. They, they become numb. Mm. You know? um, or to block out feelings, they get numb emotionally. You know, um, then there's another aspect of it, which is avoidance, where people just they're not watching news. They're acting like it's not happening. Um, they're not wearing masks. You know, <laughs> um, they're avoiding as if it's not. <laughs> I digress. Um, but they're acting like it's not happening. Um, and then the, the fourth part is re-experiencing. Um, mm. Ooh, is, okay. Um, that can include nightmares. That can include flashbacks, and that also can include how you know. How, yesterday, I was talking about how we are kind of re-traumatizing ourselves, you know, by scrolling on Instagram and seeing videos of people getting killed, you know, watching these murders on television. Um, and I know even for me, I used to love Criminal Mind. I used to watch that show at least two, three times a week. With everything going on, I couldn't watch it. No. I haven't watched Criminal Minds and Law, Law and Order. I haven't watched it in some months. Yeah. It's too close to reality. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I wish somebody would tell my sister not to watch it anymore because every time she sees an episode, she's calling <laughs> to find out if it happened to me or are you okay? I, wow. I don't think there's anybody in the building who has plutonium, Tiff. So I think we're good. <laughs> wow. You never know. You never know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, but everybody, everybody's level of resilience is different. So there, there are people, they can watch that all day long and, and be fine, you know. And it doesn't mean that somebody is stronger or weaker, but our levels of tolerance and res- resilience is just different. It is. That, that all- makes a lot of sense. Yeah. How many people do you think will will need some form of mental health care um, after the pandemic, on the other side of the pandemic, on the other side of social unrest? Therapeutically speaking, I think everybody needs therapy even before this happens. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, I just think that people, I don't know what people think therapy is. Wow. Like this, this could be therapy. Us talking, you know, processing our thoughts, thinking about things in different ways, changing the way we look at things. To me, that's therapy. Like, it doesn't have to be, oh, I'm laying out on the couch and (laughs) the psychologist has their notepad. It's it's not that deep. And people really. (laughs) (laughs) There's no time, y'all. No. Listen, I have a couch in my office. I've had one person attempt to lay down on that couch. I'm like, listen, <laughs> don't that, that can't like you're woman up to lay down on. Like, what are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> get up, get up. <laughs> People are true. But I mean, I really think that everybody should utilize therapy. It's okay. It does not mean you're crazy. To me, I, and sometimes therapy is prevention. Oh, let's get ahead of this. Let's yeah. let's not wait until you know I'm a complete mess. I'm seeing some signs now, so let me go ahead and talk to someone before it gets to that point. Wow, wow. What advice do you have for people when it comes to picking a a mm-hmm. mental health partner? Ooh. I like partner because we are like collaborators. We're, we're, you know, a team. (laughs) Yes. We're bouncing ideas off each other. Um, There are plenty of websites that you actually, (laughs) I saw one the other day, like they let you pick 
religious affiliation, <laughs> race, gender, city. <laughs> like, I was city like, might be important. City might be important. Right now, it doesn't mean anything because, I mean, we all social distancing anyway, but that might be important. Uh, you don't want to be in Kenya and, and Atlanta. Uh, for, I mean, it just might be a little more difficult time wise. Uh, right. Time zone. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I mean, because I, I've heard some people lately say, well, you know, Black therapists matter. And, you know, um, it's important to get with someone that will understand you. I understand when people say that. I don't think that's always the case. Break that down, please. Break that down. I don't want to get the hate mail. (laughs) Make it plain, Dr. Patrice. (laughs) Make it plain. Um, And no, I ain't ain't a doctor. I don't get doctor money. I would, (laughs) but no. Um, But, um, I I have I have related more. <laughs> this one, I have related more to old white women. Okay. And, and like I have had great relationships. I feel like the work gets done more efficiently. We're vibing better. It, it and I think that people would think, oh, she probably would be better with the young, the black. No. I can connect with whoever I can connect with. And it, it just so happens that there have been older white women <laughs> that I just connect more to. Um, and that, and I just feel like going based off the, simply the color of someone's skin to find a therapist, just because I'm black doesn't mean I can relate to you. My upbringing might be different. You know, um, there's been plenty of times where um, somebody will say something. I'm like, what does that mean? Explain that to me. And I think that's the beauty of therapy. If I'm coming from a stance of not knowing, a stance of curiosity, and I get you to explain it to me, sometimes you explaining it will even give you a better idea of how you really feel about things. Wow. So like this idea that we have to be the same, sometimes I feel like that can be a disservice. I want us to be different because I want you to explain to me so you can hear yourself talk. And I want you to make sense of what you just said. So that way it's clear to anybody. Ooh. Um, <laughs> that, that explains it. That unpacks a lot. It unpacks a lot. Um, I've often heard it said that if a therapist is giving you prescriptions and stage directions on how to live your life, that's not a therapist. That's a life coach. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, uh, so I was like, oh, okay, now I know the difference. Herbie yeah. just got smarter. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, I and, you, and in my, my program, they even taught us that you are not a counselor. You're a therapist. Wow. Counselors counsel you and tell you, give you instruction, you know, this is what you should do. As a therapist, I'm not going to tell you what to do. How can I tell you what to do? You've been with yourself for some odd years. <laughs> I did with you last week. So I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to help you figure out what's best for you. And we're going to weigh out the pros and cons, look at all the options as we can. And um, we're going to have a conversation. But for me to tell you what to do, that just doesn't even sit right with me. Mm. Mm. You have to choose because you have to live with this. I'm not going on with you. <laughs> yeah. You know. Where do you think the stigma comes from in the black community when it comes to therapy uh and mental health education? Yeah. I think there's a very big um like this idea that we keep everything in-house. You don't share our family secrets. You don't take this and let other people know because we're private, we're proud, and we don't want anything that's going to make us look bad. Wow. In, a, in addition to the fact that we have Jesus, and that's, that's all you know. That's, that's enough. That's enough, Kanye. That's enough. We got Jesus and that's enough. How do we and break through those barriers? Understanding that 
Jesus <laughs> and understanding that, you know, he sent people here to help us all. Doctors, nurses, lawyers, you know. Um, why is mental health not looked at as something that we need to take care of? Right. We'll go on diet. We'll exercise to take care of our bodies. But we're, we're forgetting the brain, the mind. Mm. One of the most powerful organs in our body, we tend to give the least amount of attention to. That is, uh, that is powerful. Uh, it's powerful and it's deep. Um, so how do we break away from that? I think it's so great that social media. I really think that social media has pushed that, you know, this idea that therapy is helpful. Um, the stigma that is crazy or that you are crazy, that is decreasing. And I have to give kudos to the millennials and, you know, Generation Y and Z and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're making it okay to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think that a lot of people are going to therapists because they don't feel comfortable talking to family. Wow. Now that's kind of sad. Yeah. Sad. That, is, that is pretty sad. I mean, um, but it goes back to what I was saying at the beginning about using this time to talk to your family, using this time to get to know each other all over again. Yeah. That is absolutely so important, really important. Mm -hmm. um, wow. <clears throat> we, 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 we've we almost exhausted all of our time. Uh, <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought we just started talking. <laughs> and we didn't. We, we, um, uh, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. If you were not in, in, um, in, in working in mental health, what would you be doing? I would be a background singer. Girl, you know you ain't no background singer. You know you lead. <laughs> I would be blue whopping in the back. And, and writing writing the song, writing the lyrics. Because that's where uh, money is. Uh, yeah, money is definitely in the lyrics. It definitely in the lyrics. Definitely in the lyrics. That's what I would be doing. One time Drake was looking for a backup singer. I, I almost applied. Oh. <laughs> You do not need to be a backup singer. You need to be the front ground singer. You are not Destiny's Child. You are Beyonce. I'm so shy. I, I, I was sing on the video before I was seen like live. Really? That's, mm -hmm. But we our duets were always live. So what's up with that? <laughs> I wasn't up there by myself though. This is true, and I wasn't either. I had you. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we got to find mrs sean at some point and 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 give her give her a big shout out because she was, about her. yeah didn't we forget about her i'm doing our show choir stuff and getting our outfits our uniforms <laughs> i remember mr swingler i love mr swingler but i, I forgot about mr. sean I got I got to I got to Hepsiba High my senior year like on my way out uh, my the last year so I heard a lot about Mr. Swindler but he had already gone by the time I got there so I got Mrs. Johnson um, and she, yeah, yeah she was she was a doll she was a doll shout out to Miss Shantz folks uh, yeah. and Mr. <laughs> Swindler even I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> So no. you're doing some other stuff too. I hear you're doing a project with your sister. Tell me about that. Yes, me and my sister, um, we have a podcast. It actually has been a year already. Time what? has gone by. It's crazy how much time is flying by. So we have a podcast called Sisters with a Voice. Um, okay. My biological sister, five years older than me, but um, we get along. Even though we're different, we get along very well. That's and nice. uh, so we just talk about life and love, religion. And um, she's the educator. And with me being a therapist, we kind of bring those two things together and, and put Jesus in the middle of all that. Awesome. And uh, we talk and laugh a lot. <laughs> Has your conversation and topics changed a little bit with the current climate? We have addressed some of it. Um, and actually, right now, we've just been taking a break. Because I, sometimes 
it, it's too much. It's a lot going on. And um, just to kind of get ourselves together and process our own thoughts about how we feel about it. You know, we've been we've kind of been doing podcasts on our own, just us talking about what's going on, but not recording it. Which yeah. Defeats the purpose, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess that could really be our own therapy. You yeah, know what so. it is. It is definitely a form of therapy. Um, you know, I, um, I often talk about uh, my parents, and um, at some point, Pearl will make an appearance on Hanging with Herbie to give us uh, her take on uh, uh, on Rona and how to how. Uh, <laughs> how to travel uh, during and after the pandemic. So she's going to give us yes. her experience. And she told me she only gave me 15 minutes and that was it. So we definitely going to have to have other people on the show that day. Because <laughs> she's like, you get 15 minutes and that's all. <laughs> but no, that, would be that would be so helpful. It would be very helpful. It would be very helpful. Um, she taught me how to pack uh, when it would come time for, for business travel. So she's definitely got a wonderful word, and um, and even in her way, she will probably definitely uh, uplift us in in, in in a unique way. But uh, we only got 15 minutes, so I'm saving that 15 minutes for a very special occasion. <laughs> but um, we've we've been conne- we've connected a lot more. Uh, me and my, my mom and I, and my dad and my sister, we kind of have family conversations and family discussions. Um, right on the phone and now of course with FaceTime, you know, that gets we get to see each other because you know, like I've told people before, I I have not been going back to Augusta just surely out of protection. In Fulton County, we have the highest rate uh, of infection with the with COVID Mm nineteen. And I just don't want to inadvertently infect my parents uh, or my niece or my sister uh, unaware, you know, either I'm asymptomatic or have something on my shoe or just the environment. Um, So we've been playing it safe and we've definitely been using technology to the to the best of our benefit. And so that has been like my therapy with with my Mm -hmm. parents. Um, And it's been great. We've laughed. Well, we always laugh. We always laugh. We always get a good laugh in there somehow. <laughs> um, <but> yeah. <laughs> uh, so what is next on your docket? What is up? What is what is your next big thing? What is next for Lacanya? I don't know if I should, should even say this. I, I'm going to say it because I think it's going to hold me accountable. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to hold I, you accountable. We going to hold you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so hard right now because let me tell you, when I was in grad school, they gave us 15 books the first semester. At that moment, I stopped enjoying reading. Wow. It was too much. But um, I have started a program to become certified in yoga. And it's a lot of reading. And so I'm falling asleep with these books and note, note pads in my hand every night. So y'all pray, keep me lifted up so I can get this done in a timely fashion. <laughs> Lift up, y'all. Lift up. <laughs> For all of us, go to word of prayer. <laughs> well, get us started now. Don't get us started. I know. I know, right? We have a church service right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yoga. So what got you interested in yoga? You mentioned uh, uh, real quick, you mentioned that you have a unique way of dealing with stress. Um, so tell us about that real quick and how and how yoga has been helping you. Yes. Um, most people get stressed and like they'll say, oh, I can see it in your face or, you know, or you're shaking or, you know, you're crying. That's not me. When I get stressed out, my body will let me know. Wow. And so some people might see like on my Instagram or Facebook, wherever you'll see me say, oh, my head hurt, my back hurt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I need my masseuse, so I need my chiropractor. And my body really will tell me my shoulders, like I've had to work on like keeping my shoulders down. Because mm. I, sometimes I'm walking like this, I'm, I don't realize it. So <laughs> I have to stretch it out. So that's where yoga came into place. And um it's been so helpful for me. So that's why I, I really got interested in, okay, let me get certified. Cause I'm up and posting these videos on Instagram and I ain't nowhere near certified. I'm like crap yoga. Um, so, 
So it's beneficial for me. And I've had so many people write me and say, just watching you do that is relaxing to me. I'm wow. Like, okay. Whatever <laughs> works your boat. Whatever calms you down. <laughs> Whatever keeps yeah. you from PTSD situations. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. But yeah, um, it's so cool. And um, painting. I've been doing a lot of painting thanks to all the virtual classes that are happening online. So wow. my, my yoga room is filled with paintings that I've um, done just this past year. Are you featuring them anywhere? Are you showing them to us? Because I kind of want to see them now. So that's another challenge. I'm challenging you right here, right now. You're going to have to show those on Insta. Well, I was showing them in my stories and then on Facebook years ago, I started an album just for photos. I mean, for uh, artwork. So it, it's up there, but I hadn't updated it. Maybe I need to update the newer ones and put it on there. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> stories are great, but they're gone within 24 hours, you know. Correct. So, you know, put it out there. Maybe we want to see it for a little bit longer. <laughs> No, okay. let, me, look, let me write that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Lakanya, it's been it's been so awesome chatting with you and reconnecting with you. Um, we will definitely be keeping this up uh, far after Rona is uh, no longer out here in these streets like it is right now. Um, when, I, when I'm finally able to come back to Atlanta, I, I'll make sure I contact you. Yeah, and when I'm back down in Charleston, I'll holler at you. <laughs> will do, will do. Um, love you much, praying for you, and you know you always we are, we are rebels for life. So yes, um, yes, rebel for life. That, that was a, did you know that was a sign. I eight did times? not. I did not know that. I wasn't there long enough. <laughs> I wanted eight months, what eight, nine months, and what that long enough? <laughs> long yeah, enough, was, long enough to stand across the stage and a glittery vest that Miss Shot got. <laughs> Them ugly vests. Sure. Wasn't it like burgundy or maroon or something? It was something hot, hot, awful, ugly. That's what mm -hmm. I remember. It was hot, awful, ugly. But we danced our little hearts away. <laughs> And every nursing home in town. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. I, mean, I did not like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dear. I will definitely be in touch um, and, and keep doing what you're doing. You're much needed. Um, and we'll be praying for you. All right. Thank you. All right. See you soon. And we'll have you back. And the next time you're back and we have our technology straight, mm -hmm. I give. We might get a people something. We might get a people something. Yes, yes. Be a little come as come in their own way. Herbie and Kanye come in their own way to give us perhaps an A and B selection. Yes, yes. <laughs> you are a mess. We've been in church too long. So <laughs> we have been churched. We That's have been churched. Schooled in the art of church. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> All right, dear. You take care. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right, folks. Next week, um, we're going to be talking to some really interesting folk. Um, and uh, I, I encourage you to tune back in. Um, we're talking to some religious leaders uh, on uh, the, the the meaning of justice and what that looks like from a biblical standpoint and, and from a natural standpoint. So, if you're interested, tune back in. Um, two to three of probably the most uh, profound young men that I know, uh, and and they definitely have been um, blessed for such a time as this to kind of share their wisdom uh, and, and kind of help us along. So, all right, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with Herbie. Until next week, keep hanging. <laughs>